Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Last year, a couple of insanely talented designers, they teamed up together and set out to create one of the most epicest versions of one of the most beloved spaceships in sci-fi and pop culture history, and the result was this. The UCCS Ultimate Custom Collector Series Boba Fett Slave 1 in LEGO minifigure scale. It's an awesome creation that pushes the achievable details in LEGO bricks to their limits, and sometimes can push the builders that are trying to create them to their mental limits because of the absolute specificity and intricacy required in order to get this buttery smooth bamf of a LEGO build actually put together. Today, I am now setting out to build their Django Fett version of the Slave 1, which I am told is not quite as simple as just a recoloring of the same ship. Instructions for both of these creations can be found below at brickvault.toys. And now let's go on this build journey together and construct one of the most advanced LEGO creations ever, which is gonna start with us setting up our build space because it's a lot of pieces. Two hours into the build and guess what I put together? Nothing. I have just organized all the pieces, but it is so important to have everything you need when you need it so you are not wasting your time looking around for all the pieces. This is just shy of 5,000 parts total, so it's still gonna be a fairly long process, and I'll give you some highlights along the way. This gets taken apart later when you're building the display stand, but it helps support the Django Slave one as you're putting the model together. A clever little bit of design that makes your life a lot easier. Maybe a little less than an hour into the build. Very easy, very smooth. Not even close to the hard part yet. All right, it's the beginning of day two. Let me show you what this thing looked like at the end of day one. Lots of greebles, lots of minute little details that you need to get right. And we're about to begin one of the curved slope areas, which includes flexi tubes and lots of clips that you want to get spaced just right. Fairly tight fit here, but it all comes together with just a few adjustments. And I think final, final adjustments for these slopes probably happens a little bit later. All right, day two complete. Only a couple more hours really have gone into the build, but really, really solid connections here. Lots of big chunks of bricks all getting mixled and snapped in together. beginning of the next day I managed to get the shoulder bits on and there's some greebles along the back but what I just finished is the beginning of adding these types of interlocking panels uh, they get finessed a bit later down the way right now I'm just trying to get everything on the model and then I'll play around with making it look all pretty a little bit later Hey, get that out of your mouth. <laughs> I didn't know you had that in your mouth. Get in there with the model. Right here is what I think the final day of building is going to be. 
Uh, I've got all the modular chunks, not modular. I've got all the different sub assemblies of the model actually built out. So I'm not going to be building any pieces from raw bricks anymore, but instead doing all the final attachments and tweaks. Like for example, I don't think I've got the correct length for the flexi tube, but I'm going to sort of play around with how certain things come together and then make the final cuts and all the final adjustments for everything else that needs to go on to the Slave 1. So let's see how long this takes. All right, it is finally done. Look how much my beard has grown since the beginning of this video. Word to the wise, don't break this model. Uh, about the last third-ish of the build requires a lot of very delicate, complex finessing that you have to completely redo if you make a break, so uh, don't break it. I don't know if you saw the last few frames of the time lapse, but Oof, that is painful to rewatch. Comment below the last time you made an oopsie poopsie with one of your Lego models, because this now is maybe my worst break of the channel's history, beating out the time I dropped an ARC 170 onto an A-Wing. Now, I may have mentioned briefly that you can get the instructions for both of these models at our web store, BrickVault.toys. We test the instructions to make the model buildable, the parts for the creation are chosen for availability, and buying instructions help support the channel and the talented builders we work with. Marshall, Banana, and Skywalter have designed tons of great creations in the past, so click below if you're interested in a detailed build challenge. Now, jumping in. Much of the smooth detailing that you see in this ship is very much present in the original Boba Fett version of the ship, so I have linked a couple of videos in the description below if you want to hear me go on a bit more about the ooey gooey smoothie uh, build styling and techniques that can be found on either model. So for time's sake, I'm just going to summarize how I feel about the shaping of the Django Fett model. And now I can jump into some of the changes and maybe the unique features of what makes this a little bit different. The hidden weapons panel on the right side of the Boba Fett ship is on both sides now for the Django ship. On top of that, the weapons rack or door itself has been constructed differently, so now it can fold open in two different configurations. It can sort of split right in the middle there. The blasters at the bottom have been constructed in a slightly different style, but functionally they're pretty much the same. They swivel up and down. And then really internally you have the most changes between the two builds. The Django Slave 1 does not have the seats that rotate in tandem with the arms this time around. This is technically more accurate based on how it's portrayed in Episode 2 and the Clone Wars and functionally it's a little bit easier to interact with. The bottom passenger seats are set a bit wider now so two figs can sit at the same time here and the pilot slash co-pilot seats plus control console area is built a little differently on top of that. I think it looks a bit cleaner with the seats set deeper into the ship but there's also some nice little bit of finessing as well but truly outside of the changes i just described both of these models are practically identical slow and steady it shares most of the same greebles in the back almost part for part pretty much uh and the back here of the django slave one still has the deployable seismic charge which is always fun the missiles in the bottom fold open just like the original and the model has the opening and closing compartment slash walkway area when in the landed configuration. Also here's a couple quick additions I almost forgot. This model can be constructed with the dark green shoulders. Canonically I don't remember when or if it ever really looked this way but there are definitely folks out there that like it with a bit of the dark green instead and the design has included this as a build option. At the same time the Django Slave 1 also has the alternate windscreen options like the original version of the build 
build. I personally went for the blacked out purple piece here, but you can go clear or do the brick built version as well. Now together or either one of these models are generally just one of the more challenging custom builds out there that you can tackle. The smooth mollusk like shell demands quite a bit of meticulous finessing that you almost never really encounter in Lego bricks. And conversely, it's fairly delicate in these areas as you might imagine. So really treat this as a display model only, but you just don't get detail like this anywhere else either, plain and simple. It's pretty, I mean, they are pretty. I like them. If you want to get the instructions, take the build challenge for yourself, feel free. That is BrickBolt.Toys. Everything's linked in the description below. Let us know what other types of builds you would like to see in the future. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video, and we'll see you next time at BrickVault. BrickVault.